thanks everyone for being here. I'm Brad Wood, and I work at Earlham College, which if you um, go directly east of Indianapolis, all the way until you get to the Indiana-Ohio border, uh, we're located in Richmond, and that's where that's at. Um, I've been web developing since the third grade. Uh, was asked by a person if I wanted to learn how to build web pages, so started with a front page editor and was tired of how much it jacked up my code. So I went to Notepad uh, and then worked on uh, building websites for uh, elementary school, junior high, and high school. And then uh, graduated with uh, BS in computer science, new media systems. Um, so uh, this is our web team at Irwin College. Um, so we have to do a lot with uh, not very much. Um, so the web content manager, um, he's been at Irwin for 25 years, so he really understands the politics of who to go to and what content is um, good to get some pushback and what, what content changes uh, need to be there and stuff. Uh, so that's very helpful. I'm glad I don't have to do this job on a daily basis. Um, I'm able to dive into the technical side of things, build out new functionality that doesn't currently exist. And then I have three uh, student workers. Okay. So we have three student developers and uh, what's been really nice about that is um, I'm trying to get them exposed to open source and committing code so that then they have a better setup when they are talking with employers and saying, hey, I have this experience. And so I'm really trying to build that into our process with um, going to the, the new CMS. So the problem is that our current CMS is old um, and clunky and it's just pretty much myself and students that are able to work on it. So uh, my goal today is to take you along this journey of replacing the old CMS and with a new modern one and what to keep in mind when looking for a new one. You might be able to salvage what you have, um, but if you can't, then these are some of the things that you, uh, I, I think are helpful for looking for a uh, new content management system. So the current one that we have is in Bravo 4.9, which is a .NET ecosystem, and my predecessor um, had, had uh, left six months prior to me getting there, so there really was no knowledge transfer uh, that took place. So I felt kind of like a surgeon, doctor, do no harm. Uh, so there's some code and stuff in there that it's like I really can't grasp what all it's connected to. So I was able to use the code that's in the system already and say, okay, that's generally what's happening. I want to build new stuff. Okay, I'll build it. And, and that was sort of my strategy from the get-go. Um, and yes, periodically that error message does show up in the uh, admin panel. Um, and, uh, but <laughs> my, my rule is do no harm. Uh, if, if the site's still working, uh, don't cross your fingers and, and hope uh, things go well. And usually a, a server restart. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the old uh, CMS can feel like a jalopy uh, from the grace of wrath. Um, but you want the modern one to feel like this, uh, that's dependable. And uh, so, in that search, there's lots of CMSs out there. Um, so, um, you can find some of these elements that I'll be discussing today in, in several of them. Uh, this was just sort of the one that. Uh, Postrophe TMS was the one that sort of stuck out um, that would work well for us. And um, the bread and butter of what I do is front end development, UX, and so server stuff and managing that is kind of scary for me. Uh, so this uh, content management system, I was just amazed at getting it up and running and how quickly I can do it. Um, and it sort of finds the sweet spot between open source, enterprise support, 
And uh, there's some other colleges uh, like Franklin and Marshall, uh, they use this, and then some uh, smaller subsets of, of Duke have, uh, have used apostrophe CMS. So apostrophe CMS is uh, built by the folks at Punk Ave, and uh, from my understanding is that they want to build websites in a consistent manner, so they ended up building their own CMS because they didn't see uh, one out there that that fit their client's needs, and then that sort of developed into um, this product that then they do offer um, enterprise supports. Um, so the other awesome thing is that I'm actually able to chat with the developers of the CMS. Uh, so it is open source, and sometimes I am amazed at how much free help they, they give in the chat room. Uh, uh, I think some of us take advantage of that, um, but uh, they are very helpful and it's able to sort of um, give you that pulse of what's coming down the pipeline um, and be able to interact with other community members that are using it and think about different uh, use cases and stuff. And uh, so this is a Discord server um, that they have for the community. And then here's some of the uh, contributions that the community has been uh, submitting um, and so that's another awesome thing to be able to, to be able to tweak and modify and also be able to look into the code and see how the apostrophe CMS is doing it and then you can extend it or um, modify your own version of that. Uh, so the first thing I want to share that has been a uh, big pain point with our old CMS is um, our old CMS does not have in-context editing. So uh, let me go back to this slide that has that tree on the left hand side. That does not map up very well with act the actual navigation of the site. So and, and unfortunately the search functionality was very limited, so sometimes when you upload an image in there, uh, good luck finding it again. <laughs> um, and so, and then um, I, I kind of have to put myself in the mindset of whoever might have like created that page, like where, if I was this person, where is it in this tree? Uh, so that can be very frustrating. Um, and so, Within context editing, if you have permission, if you're logged in and you have permission, then you can edit it. And you can uh, uh, scope that down. Uh, you can scope that down to uh, very granular, uh, create different groups and stuff. Um, and pretty much um, what you can add there, widgets and other stuff, is just up to your imagination. Um, so it it's um, going to be, I think, adopted very well by the new users. Um, it's going to minimize the amount of of training, and we'll be able to have control over um, a lot of uh, widgets. So this is uh, grabbing images uh, from the media gallery, and those images can easily be stored in Amazon S3 uh, storage. Um, so, during the development process, we've been thinking about, okay, what's our current functionality on our website? What is some functionality that we can consolidate together in order to minimize the number of modules that we build? Um, and the benefit is, when you fix an issue in one module, wherever it's used on the entire site, that fix gets trickled there. So it's not, so um, that will be very helpful in the long run. Uh, so as you see, when you click the plus sign, it drops down. Those are the available widgets. Um, and you can define what widgets are available on uh, different types of pages um, as, as well. And then the um, apostrophe logo up on the top left is where you access the main thing, uh, the main menu. And you have really ultimate control of what menus are there and, and the field types and stuff. So, Context editing will save a lot of time because you're not trying to be sort of stuck in these two different worlds of the admin panel and the website. Um, OK, 
Okay, another um, great thing for to look for in CMS is localization. Uh, this is done uh, several ways. Uh, so, like, if you have um, any text that's like in your in your theme or your content, uh, then those can get swapped out with language keys. Um, apostrophe does have a module uh, that creates a workflow. So if you create some new content and it needs to be localized, then uh, it will add it to the queue, the translator goes in there, adds the translation, and then that content is ready to be viewed um, by all languages. Um, and, um, and then I have the link down in the bottom left-hand corner of where you can view the code for that module. And I'll have the slides um, there will be a link at the end of my presentation um, that you can view all the, the slides. So um, at Erlen, we do have a single sign-on solution that ITS um, has, and so uh, the goal with apostrophe is not to give a student or a faculty member one more password that they have to remember. Um, the other thing too is the department heads are, it's predictable knowing who the department heads are in advance. I don't have to create this like, okay, this username matches up with this person. I can today go to the, go to the website, look at the staff directory, and then I know, okay, this person is the department head of this department. Then I can go ahead and set up the permissions for that person. Then when, down the road, when they log in, that, that will all be set up. Um, so, finding a CMS that has single sign-on solution, uh, there's um, some protocols. So, Passport is a pretty awesome one because there's like uh, a plethora of, of things that you can sign in with uh, Passport. Um, SAML or uh, Shibboleth, um, I think ITS has one of those two. Uh, and so, I'll be uh, interacting with, uh, with that uh, single sign-on. And uh, another thing to look for is responsiveness. Uh, so I, um, many years ago, had worked for a software company, and the product that they shipped had a certain version of Bootstrap associated with it. And we ran into issues when clients would have the newer version of Bootstrap than the core product and you had to do a lot of like scoping so that all the functionality of the content um, could, could leverage the newer version of Bootstrap while trying to not interact and mess things up with the content management system. So um, in this case, Apostrophe CMS does not come with um, Bootstrap, um, but you can easily layer it in when you pull in uh, the dependencies. Uh, the other thing is, um, I created a module that uh, allows you to build columns on the page, and I decided to go with pure CSS for the grid, so that it was just isolated to that, and then it was less likely to conflict with anything else. So with um, pure CSS, you're able to just import just the grid portion and have it, have it build it out. So the, um, the module, you're able to place four columns, and then you're able to say, uh, do I want this to be a narrow page or a full width page? And then you're able to describe the widths of the four. The other thing is, is that you can do it personally. So within those four columns, one to four columns, you can also put one to four columns and just keep on doing that down. So um, it was nice to be able to just build that and then um, just be able to have that flexibility um, right, right out of the, the gate. Um, and they use uh, less uh, uh, files for CSS um, just by default. Um, you can switch it out for SAS. Um, it's a little bit of tweaking, but, um, but pretty much those work uh, fairly similar. And, um, so another thing you want to look for is how much control do you have over uh, search engine optimization? 
uh, especially a lot of the meta tags that go into um, the code. With uh, apostrophe CMS, you're able to um, pretty much have ultimate control. They do have a module that adds uh, the SEO uh, module that will add some additional fields uh, to get you thinking about making better, more semantical uh, SEO markup. Um, but ultimately, you can have complete control um, as what the markup is, and um, you can also in your in your. So unfortunately, the recording of my talk stopped recording for some reason. So I'll just discuss here about the additional slides and the ideas behind them. So the other thing that you want to see have is a distributed. So our setup with Umbraco was an IIS server that had the images, assets, all on one server, the database. So you really couldn't grow and scale as, as the number of images increased, then the performance would go down. With apostrophe CMS, we we're able to sort of separate those things in the different baskets. So the images get stored on Amazon S3 storage, the database is MongoDB, which we, during development, we have our IT department spin up a MongoDB database. And then the Node.js is on a Heroku server. Um, and for development, we're just working off of the sandbox from there. So that really allows you to grow and, and scale those different areas as needed. Then the migration process we're going to go with is um, we're going to screen scrape as much as we can from the old site and have it generate these CSV files. Now each module of apostrophe is able to have CSV files to be able to import. So your people directory has all the people and you can generate a CSV file to import into there. So we'll create the CSV files, import the data, and then we'll remake those connections to the image assets through um, the admin. And then this slide, the migration strategy, is I'm calling it more or less like um, develop as the water comes cl uh, more clear. So development stage, develop a one-to-one -one of what the current site is to about 65% of the functionality of the current site. Then you move on to migration and as you're migrating there will be things that you've missed or other things but by you doing the migration you'll get a better idea of how these pieces come together. Then you move on to beta testing and then an additional 10% of the functionality will be developed then. That way you're more down the road and you're able to take a lot of people's feedback and have a better picture of how all of these pieces are going to come together. And then, uh, then it will be ready for production and then you'll launch it. And as I mentioned earlier in the talk that uh, our team is small, so it's pretty much just how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So um, as we move closer to production, things will speed up and things will um, get a lot quicker um, with that. And then in summary, in context editing, localization, single sign-on, responsiveness, SEO, complete control of SEO is helpful, and then uh, distributed. The additional freebies that Apostrophe has set up in modules are uh, REST API. So any of the modules you can expose to REST API just by doing a REST API equals true, and then you include the Apostrophe headless module, which that's really awesome. So if you have, have another microsite that needs the staff directory or another object, you can uh, do that easily. 
then there's also rich text permalink. Uh, so if you create a news article and reference like a professor in there and then down the road they change their name or uh, something else changes, that reference in that article will be updated automatically. Uh, so that can also work with class names and other, other objects uh, so that if they change down the road, any place they are on the site will be updated. Then uh, Apostrophe also has a lean front end option. So if you don't want any libraries, jQuery, all that stuff, it's just the bare bones of what Apostrophe will run on. You can also implement that. And then once again, S3 storage, super easy customization. And then that gives you the ability to store it in the cloud. And thanks for listening to my talk and watching the video here. And then there's the link for the slides if you want the whole slide deck. So I'm Brad Wood, and uh, it was great to be able to speak at WebCon. Hope you enjoyed this talk, and uh, feel free to send me an email if you have any questions or comments. Thanks.